So welcome back to another video. Now, what we're going to do this time is CO. So the air plate and the fuel distributor work hand in hand, but there's a setting with your three mil Allen key. So if anyone mentions three mil Allen key, it's quite a long one. That's about as long as you need fit down the hole. Now that gets the point of the air plate and the fuel distributor and gets the right fuel level. Now this is uh, it's probably the most common issue I have, um, whether it's metering heads that have been set on a car and needs a bit more tweaking or people are having problems um, running rich, running lean, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to go through this on setting this air plate up with this metering head, this sort of a Porsche, um, setting the air plate up so you can see where the CO2, I've got to stop saying CO2, where the CO needs to be to get the right fuel mixture. So we'll move over to it. Um, we'll go quick onto the old demo, the cut apart so you can see what we're looking at. I'll briefly go over that, then we'll come onto here and um, do some adjustments and I'll do some physical tests so we can see what the difference is doing. So, remember going back to P visual is our fuel pin lifts up, sends fuel out relevant to our air plate moving up. Now, the CO adjustment, or I'm going to actually, I'm going to call it the mixture adjustment. The mixture adjustment is the Allen key going in here. So when you put your Allen key down that hole, it sits in there, and that is a very fine thread, so don't cross-thread it. Now, what we're doing as we adjust this is physically, as the plate's moving up, you can see it pushes on there. When we adjust this thread in or out, it move, physically moves that arm, that arm's there, you adjust it to that way or that way. So you screw it that way, that arm physically moves up. What does that do? It rests on the roller inside here. See that roller there? That's where the fuel pin sits. So that arm moves up and in turn pushes a fuel pin up, which in turn uncovers more of the fuel slits. So that is the mixture. You're adjusting this arm in relation to the air plate and the fuel being injected at idle. Too much fuel, plates, that arm's too high. Too little fuel, that's too low. Providing the air plate is sat at its rest position at the lowest point of the cone. So this is our air plate. Now I've deliberately not adjusted this, just so we can see this. So as we know, our air plate moves up, full throttle, simulated, and down. And we have an idle position which is about there. Now it doesn't look much, but that's what the positions are. So you ask how do we get the air plate in the right place? Well, the air plate is sat where it should be. So the air plate is in line with the lowest cylindrical point before it starts tapering. Once it's there, we can then look at the idle position. Now, the idle position is this plate lifted two mil. Now, I've already measured this. So for simulation purposes, this is a special tool. Sits in there like that. As you can see, that is where the plate is sitting. Now that is two mil plate lift at idle, which is from technical books, that is your idle position of the air plate. And obviously going back to the other video of my golf running, which I'll stick in in a minute, you can see this measurement here goes in line with where the air plate runs on my car. So that's idle position and that's closed. Doesn't move much, does it? Right, so now we're gonna move on to actually getting the mixture screw in the right position before we start taking measurements. Now I've mentioned this in the video before, everything's an idle, what we're going to do is run your pump up. So bridge your relays um, so you can pressurise the system. Have I've turned the power on. So here we go. Right, so we're up to system pressure. This is running about 5.5 5 bar at the moment, for example, and we've got nothing coming out of the injectors. So what we want to do 
is turn this clockwise. Clockwise, as you're looking down, is more fuel. So I'm going to turn that in there. All I'm going to do is run the system up again and we want to be looking at the injectors when they start dripping. Still nothing. Another full turn. Now one full turn, a 360 degree on this, raises the arm we looked about 0.2 mil. It's not a lot, very fine. Like I said, that thread is very fine, so you don't want to knacker it. Still nothing. I'm gonna do two turns to speed things along. There we go. Now you can see the injectors are starting to open. We don't want that because the plate's closed. So the injectors are opening. So where this is now, we're literally going to turn it, half turn back. Right, we can still hear the injectors chirping and coming out. So now we're going to do another whole turn backwards. Now backwards is taking fuel away or leaning the mixture. Run the system again. Right, there was a little drip on that one and that one, so I'm going to do a quarter of a turn. Backwards again. We don't want any drips, nothing. Right, so that is where we want it. That is a base setting, getting your mixture screw and your air plate and the fuel distributor lined up nicely that when the system pressures in, no fuel is coming out of those injectors. Now we can move on to the next stage. So what we do now is measure from the back of the air plate to here, two mil. So from the height of this to that plate, measure it. For example, this was 42 millimeters. I need the plate lifted two millimeters. So you subtract two of 42, gives you 40. So you want so to hold that plate up. So this gap to the plate is 40 mil on example for this one. So we know where we are. That sits there at 12 o'clock. That means that plate is lifted at 2 mil. Now what I'll do, I'll just run through and empty these, put that back in position, and then we'll run it for a test. So plate is lifted, 2 mil. They're all empty. Now we're going to run this for 30 seconds. Now what we want to be looking for is 20 millilitres of fuel or 20 cc's of fuel in two minutes. So you want 10 in one minute. You want five in 30 seconds. Remember that is bare minimum. So the minimum you want is five mil, five cc's of fuel in 30 seconds. So let's see what we've got. Ideally, I want a bit more, but let's go. So that's 30 seconds run and we have got pretty much all across reading 10 mil on these. Now remember, these aren't the most accurate in the world. Everything is done with as much precision as we can. You're gonna have some, you know, percentage differences. So 10 mil of fuel, you can look at that plus or minus, you know, one or two mil, you're looking about eight. In real terms, I'd leave it there. I wouldn't need to adjust it. At this point, on your car, if you do got ejectors in bottles or your etc. etc., if you've got between 8 and 10 mil of fuel in 30 seconds, that'll do. That'll get your car running. It's not going to be overly rich. It's not going to be overly lean. It's going to be a good ballpark where you can then drive the car and take the car to somewhere who can test it properly, MOT station, or if you've got an AFR gauge, you can you know see what it's doing at idle and then convert that AFR reading into CO reading. And roughly working out with a 10, 8 to 10 mil amount of fuel, would you go for 10? That amount of fuel in there 
that should equivalent on most cars, um, especially 16 valve, because I've tested it on those and mainly most catered cars. That amount of fuel with the air plate should equate to around 2, 1.5 to 2% CO mixture, which again in the UK is well under your legal limit of 3.5. Not sure in other countries, but that is a good ballpark where you want to sit to. Now, if you're testing this, as soon as you put fuel pressure in there and any one of these injectors is spraying out fuel, that means you've got a seal gone inside here. So if that happens, you've got problems straight inside here, unless you rebuilt it and adjusted it and one of those is well off. So hopefully that's shown you in a bit more detail specifically on getting the mixture screw up to the point the car's going to start. Once the car's running, then you've got a lot more avenues to go down to finesse it and get it perfect. So again, 3 mil Allen key fits in there. Again, you want to get your air plate sat perfectly relevant to specs. Certain ones are different. Generally, I put the air plate about half a mil, between half a mil and bang on between the cylinder point of the cone and before it starts going up. Once you're at that point, you're happy the air plate sat there. They shouldn't really go out of whack because they just shouldn't. Um, once you're there, again, run your injectors. You should have nothing coming out of them. Then you turn that clockwise, which adds more fuel, richens the mixture, to point the injector start chirping. Now these were chirping because the system pressure is wrong on here. It's not enough system pressure. So you've got six injectors opening at 3.3 bar. If you haven't got the right system pressure, as soon as the injector opens, the pressure is then lost from the metering head, which means there's not enough pressure to keep the injectors open. So then it closes and opens and closes that chirping. So you want there's a constant noise from all of them spraying out a tiny bit of fuel. That's when you know the system pressure's right. So this is ready for a rebuild. It's just on a test first, um, just to see what it's doing first. We know it's all working, physically working, but this has been in a car for a long time and it is a good rebuild. Um, again, the system pressure is wrong. That could be down to you know, a handful of things, but you know, that's another another day story. So that's where you want it. You want to adjust it until your injectors start getting fuel out and then turn it back half a turn at a time, half a turn, take the allen key out, pressurize it, five, 10 seconds. If you've got anything coming out, even a drip off one of them, turn it back another half turn until you've got nothing coming out of those and then measure your plate at the rear point of the cone. Two mil is a simulated idle position. You know, every car's different. You can have a car with different cams, different compression ratio, worn piston rings, you know, air leaks. All that affects how high that air plate lifts. So on a, if you're basing it off this, a base setting, two mil plate lift, get it so the injectors are doing about eight to 10 cc's of fuel in 30 seconds. Once that's all doing that, that is enough to get the car running. Once the car's running, you let it all warm up, and then you can then move on to the next stage of, you know, getting the CO percentage correct for the car and what specs it's got, you know, make sure the idle, car idle is running nice and all that sort of stuff. So there we go. I thought I'd cover that in a bit more detail, exactly showing you what goes on, because it's probably the number one thing I have issues with, or I help people having issues with them, getting cars running, done this, done that. Um, again, say they shouldn't really go out of whack, but you know, from the point of that being adjusted and working, you've only got to turn that half a turn and that'll take off fuel there, lean it off. And that can be the point the car won't start. Um, so you've got 10 cc's here. You turn that half a turn. Um, we'll actually try it in a minute. You can turn it half a turn and you can have a lot less fuel, which isn't enough to get the car started. So while we're there, I'll empty these. I'll put you back over here. We'll move that half a turn backwards and I'll show you how much fuel difference it makes. So these are all empty. Our two mil plate lift simulated. Alec is in there. I'm literally going to turn it half a turn backwards. Quarter, another quarter. And then I'm going to run this for 30 seconds again and you'll see how much different fuel you don't get out of there, which shows you how much effect it has on the car.
So that, that's 30 seconds past, and we drop down to that's about five, about five or six mil. So you know, plus or minus a bit, we're losing. I'd say four. Is that four? Yeah, I'd say four, four to five cc's a minute of fuel. So there we go. That shows again just how precise the mixture screw needs to be. Now, if we're going off book specs on a 16 valve Golf or any four cylinder, pretty much most to be honest, book figure is six cc's in 30 seconds. That's bare minimum just to make the car work. Now, we've just adjusted that and we are down to our bare minimum. So that, I say bare minimum, that's you near know, your book figures, but book figures go out the window when you're looking at aged engines, like I say, worn engines work differently. But that quarter, half a turn took, I'm gonna say four cc's of fuel away. So four cc's, if our minimum's six, you take four away, it's barely gonna run. And if you notice the injectors were chirping a lot more before when it was up. So again, that's how, how pronounced just a quarter of a turn so one full turn is 0.2 millimeters difference so half a turn that's 0.1 mil 0.1 of a millimeter takes away four cc's of fuel in 30 seconds so four eight so that's 16 cc's of fuel in two minutes that's a lot of fuel you're losing just on half a turn so there we go that is your mixture screw or co setting um, air plate set in there that's how to do it get it in your ballpark once you're there and you've got 10 cc's of fuel that's enough to get the car running if it's not running then you know take a step back have a look you've probably got other problems but fuel wise 10 cc's of fuel setting it that way that is enough to get the car running then you can move on to the next stage where you can like say get some gauges on it and make the fuel mixture perfect so there we go. That's another video for, I thought it was helpful. It helps a lot of people out there. You know, I get lots of questions and lots of things over time. So and I pick out bits of all of them and go, right, that's, an, that's a reoccurring issue or reoccurring problem. So there we go. That is how to do it on a bench or on your car, getting it in a ballpark, your base setting, how I would do it and how we can see it works and how much different just half a turn makes. So thanks for watching. Again, if you like the video, give it a like, stick the comments, happy to help. You know, click subscribe if you can. You know, the amount of people who watch the videos who aren't subscribed, bang that thumbs up, doesn't cost you a penny. It helps me out. So cheers for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Nonsense. It's what I need. Now if you wanna get the best of me.